All right, continuing to work on the XL800. One of the things I forgot to mention that you should always do before you're working on a car, anything that is powered, disconnect your battery so you don't fry anything or start a fire or anything like that. Always, always, always disconnect your battery. If you're working on electrical appliances at house, unplug it. People do the stupidest things. I've done it before. Get rid of your power before you go to turning wrenches or screwdrivers or whatever. So we're about to get the first look at this head. Um, I can't figure out what is holding this. I've got the four bolts out. I don't know if it's a alignment pin and it's seized up just because it's so old. But uh, you can see I've got some movement. You can see the space. It flexes a little bit just pushing down on this. But I can't figure out what's holding it. I, you can't see around there. I don't feel any more bolts. I've got, there's a bracket. This bracket right here that fits onto it. And it's got a bolt. But it's not connected. Um, so I don't know. But those are the first two bolts. Two head bolts that you take off. They're connected to that exhaust. They're longer than the, those two bolts are longer than the rest of them. They're all 12 millimeter. Uh, the head bolts. And another thing of note that I want you to see that Yamaha did as a favor to you. They told you what type of spark plug right there on that sticker. Now, your sticker may be gone on yours if somebody's pressure washed in your hull, but it's a BR8ES. And I found that uh, that's what I run in the Kawasaki, the 900, the Kawasaki 1100 that I've had. Uh, obviously, Yamaha went with the MGK plugs, too. I've heard that people have problems with other brands. So you probably want to stick with the NGK. We're going to get a first look at this head. I'm going to pull that thing off. The hard part was getting this one bolt out because I didn't have access to it here. I couldn't get a socket on it at all. I had to use a wrench. And I had a 12 millimeter line wrench right here handy. So let's pull off this head and see what we can see. All right. Now, notice we got a nice little glaze. All that crust is from where the head came off. Got a nice little glaze on this back piston. The inside of the cylinder wall is shiny. It looks good and smooth. I'm going to pull this gasket off. This one is dry. This piston has been running dry. Um, look at all the space around it there. We got a problem. You see all that space in there? It's not <laughs> too circular. Now, this motor isn't locked up. It'll still turn over. But uh, that is going to have to be redone there, baby. Um, hopefully, the cylinder wall isn't so damaged that I have to either get another one or have it bored over. This one, I think, is going to be okay. But here's the thing. If I'm taking the time to work this cylinder and build it, I am not going to go back with just this one without touching it when I'm this far into an engine. Now see, that is, a lot of people want to go on the cheap. If I'm going to take this much time to tear this engine apart, I'm going to do both cylinders. Now, you should always do that because you're going to have a higher pressure in this so, yeah, okay, I got 120 here. That's that's runnable. I can run with that. I could just leave this alone, not touch this cylinder, and put this ski back together. But I have learned over the years, going cheap, fixing anything is the wrong way to do it. You want to go ahead and new cylinder, uh, new piston, excuse me, new piston, new rings, piston rings. If I've got to get a new cylinder or get it home, I will bore it over, whatever. That's what I'm going to do because I don't like to do things over again. And going on the cheap, you're going to end up having to do things over again. And if you don't want to do it. While I'm in here, I'm going to replace these clips in these power valves with the wave eaters. And if you don't know what that is, look it up. Google it. People always want you to tell them all everything in these videos. It's one of the things I've noticed. I didn't make this video to sit there and tell you everything. Go look it up for yourself. You can Google search just like I can. But I will show you a quick little tip. 
And the Kawasaki's the same way. You see those numbers next to all those bolt holes? That's your torque sequences, and it's usually going to start right here in the middle. You see how they say there? One, two, three, four. That's where you start torquing. Then you're going to go out from there. There's your five, there's your six, and then it'll go back over to the other seven, eight. So when you retorque this down, it even tells you what to torque it to in Newton meters. 34.3, which I think you can look it up. There's a conversion online. What convert Newton meters to foot pounds? Because you're going to be dealing with foot pounds. Uh, it comes around 27, I think. 27 foot pounds of torque, but you don't go with the 27 immediately when you retorque this thing you go about half like 11 foot pounds to all the bolts then you go and you torque it on down to what you're going to torque it to that's the procedure the one thing i like about this yamaha over the kawasaki is each cylinder is individual i could just do one cylinder pull that off boom replace that boom but i'm going to do both because I like being thorough and I like doing a job right.